Today we've got a project that'll take your Nissan 240SX to the next level without breaking the bank. The Nissan 240SX powered by the reliable KA24DE is the perfect candidate for a DIY turbo conversion, even if you have moderate power goals. Picture this, improved acceleration, enhanced responsiveness, and a noticeable boost in power. So whether you're a seasoned DIYer or just starting out, this project is within your reach. We'll cover turbo selection, installation, and ECU management to help you achieve the perfect balance between power and reliability. But here's the best part, you can achieve impressive results on a budget. We'll guide you through this DIY turbo conversion step by step, making it accessible and cost effective. Imagine the satisfaction of a turbocharged 240SX that delivers a noticeable boost in performance but also remains practical for everyday driving. It's time to take your 240SX to new heights without compromising reliability. So if you're ready to turn your Nissan 240SX into a spirited performer that always leaves a smile on your face, make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow us along for the journey. As some of you may know, this is my other KA24DE S13 coupe, but this car has other plans now, and it's essentially just been put together so I can move the car about my yard and not have to worry about pushing it. So I'll be removing all of my turbo stuff from this car before putting it on that one, which is, I'm sure, a process most of you will not have to go through. So let me go over what I have here. Here we've got a 57 trim Garrett turbo with a Turbonetics T4 rear housing. This turbo has been rebuilt by my channel sponsor, Exclusive Turbo Systems. This turbo has been ported and built to make 450 to 500 horsepower. So obviously if you have forged internals, you will be able to make a lot more reliable power out of your engine. Our conversion today is for a stock internal engine. So if that's you, make sure you stick around. Now that I got the engine suspended by the crane and both of the bolts on both engine mounts loose, I'm going to get under the car and remove the bolts that hold on the front subframe. I also have the subframe held up by the jack so when I remove the bolts it can come down easily. Alright, so now that I got the engine lifted up on the crane, I now have space underneath my subframe with that dropped as well to be able to remove the oil pan. frame is just going to be held in by four 17 millimeter bolts one in the front here one right behind your lower control arm and then on the other side the same deal it should be able to drop down not too much uh, you should be able to get it down to the bottom or close to the bottom of both studs and that should provide ample room if you're using the engine crane to get up in here also if you take off your oil pan and you're not able to get enough room you can take off your oil pickup with two 10 millimeter bolts once you have the front of the pan dropped. Once you take off the pickup tube, the whole thing will slide out because there's nothing restricting it in the back. Here's my oil pan with the turbo drain on it already. This is just so you guys can see where the bolts are, right? So you've got your two in the back and then equal to each other going up the whole thing, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. For your oil return line, if you go ahead and drill right through this inside baffle right here, your line will come up between the engine mount and the back of the power steering pump, which is perfect for meeting the bottom of your turbo. There we go. I'm going to clean this up and put it on the other 240 so that doesn't have sand getting in the bottom end. And now that I got that off, go ahead and clean this one up, get it RTV'd, get the block cleaned up, and then slap it on. All right, so I got the entire oil pan cleaned off, the one with the bung on it. I got some RTV put on there. I let it sit for about five minutes while I cleaned off the bottom of the block. And now that the bottom of the block is very clean, I'm gonna go ahead and slap the oil pan on. I'm not gonna record this part of the process because there's not a lot of room under here and the video will just end up looking really poor anyways, but I'm sure most of you guys can figure out how to put on an oil pan. So I'm gonna do that and catch up with you guys. 
Here we've got a 16 inch 8AN line with a straight fitting and a 90 degree fitting. The 90 degree fitting will be going to your oil pan. The bung is right between the engine mount and the power steering pump. You can see it's straight down here, right there. This will come up, connect to the bottom of your turbo. Once you get that in, your oil return will be good to go. You'll also need a sandwich plate for your turbo oil feed. I'm also going to be replacing my stock engine mounts with some ISR polyurethane mounts that I got from Njuku Racing. All right, so you might have concluded that the battery tray needs to come out in order to run the cold side intercooler piping. So I went ahead and took a flapper disc and flapped down all the pinch welds and I got it out. You can follow a bunch of different methods and there's a lot of different YouTube videos you can follow to know where to drill to get it out. All right, so now that I got out the battery tray, I went ahead and took the cold side with the map and hooked it up so I could see where the intercooler piping was gonna come up through. I also got the hot side in. This is a no cut kit from ISR. I'm pretty sure Njuku Racing sells this. If they do, I will link it in the description below. But I'm gonna go over to Harbor Freight and get the hole saw kit so I can go ahead and drill the hole through here. Uh, so I don't have to cut some big ugly square or anything. I want it to look good. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed the hole saw kit from Harbor Freight. I got the four inch one, put on the drill bit here, and I've got my hole traced out where I'm gonna cut. And that will be right at the end of where the cold side meets up to where the battery tray used to be. All right, so now that I got that hole drilled out, it's nice and clean, neat, doesn't look like crap. I'm gonna take some self-etch primer after I clean this all out and get everything fitted properly, and I'm gonna seal up all the bare metal just so it doesn't rust out. Nobody wants those problems, right? All right, so I went ahead and took the intercooler that I have, and I put it on here, but it's the only intercooler I have that I know is good, doesn't have any contamination inside of it, doesn't leak. So it'll work for now. Plus somebody was using it on a 240 before. So it's able to mount right here to the hood latch. And then I went ahead and made a bracket at the bottom to attach it to the bottom of the hood latch. So it's in there, it's not going anywhere. And then what you can do is you can take the pieces of trim that hold your headlight motor and you can either notch it or you can cut it straight off. A lot of people elect to cut it straight off, but I like structural rigidity. So with the slit, I'm able to put it back in, attach the window motor bracket to it, and then drill it back to the bottom of the chassis where it's, you know, nice and secure. So choose what you wanna do, go ahead and do it. Then you'll be able to go ahead and slide it on in here. You'll be able to reinstall your horns if you want to, and you'll still have the mounting for those things. Now that I have the entire turbo kit plumbed into the chassis, I have to worry about the fuel management. So what we're gonna be running today is SR20 DET stock injectors. They're 370 cc's, and with the current ECU that I have, that's what it recommends. Now I currently have a chip-tuned ECU by Martin at RS Enthalpy, and it's set up for a T4 turbo on five pounds of boost with SR20 370cc injectors. So for beginners, you can always get these chip tuned ECUs from somebody like Martin for around three to $400. So if you're on a budget and you can't afford a standalone, this is what we're covering today. In the next videos, after this, we're gonna show you how to scale it up from there by getting a mega squirt standalone or whatever standalone you want to, installing it onto the car and then going from there. I also have to wire in the Z32 mass airflow sensor because that is what the ECU is set up for. Now my other car already has it set up, so I'm gonna remove the harness from that car, bring it over here, swap it with this one, so I don't have to rewire the MAF sensor and make this harness not work on a stock KA24DE, which I will continue to have inside that car over there, and it'll be NA converted again. So it'll be back to stock, so it's in my best interest to keep a harness that'll make that car run.
So now that the Z32 MAF is all wired up or you've swapped your harness over, it's time to take care of the fuel system. So we swapped in our SR injectors on a fuel rail so we didn't have to take out each individual injector because, well, if you've worked on an ash chassis, you know that getting the injector out of the fuel rail, especially if it's OEM and hasn't been removed before, it can be a process, a frustrating process. Yeah, it's better to just swap the fuel rail if you've got an extra one. Either way, I got my Walboro 255 here on a fuel hanger assembly so I don't have to swap out the pump and I'm going to get into the back of the coupe and swap this in. After I get in the fuel pump, then all I'm going to have to do is swap out two different plugs, colder plugs. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be running BK7RE and GKs. Uh, I'll check once I pull them off the other 240 because obviously that was running so the spark plugs from that car will work just fine. So once you have your spark plugs changed, you got everything else taken care of in terms of the fuel system, what you're going to have to do is route some vacuum lines. So whether you're running an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator or the stock one, you're going to want to take your vacuum line and run it straight into the back of your manifold. You can also tee your boost gauge into that line. Now for the wastegate, I have that ran all the way over to the throttle body into this far left nipple right here. So if you're looking at it from the front, it's the nipple that sticks down to the left. Once you've got your vacuum lines routed, the other thing you need to worry about is your PCV system. Some people elect to just block off the PCV, but that's going to trap excessive gases in your crankcase. The best recommendation I can give is running a catch can. You can get a catch can with a baffle and you can run your breather and your PCV to that so you're not redistributing oil and forcing crankcase pressure back into your intake manifold. Those are the vacuum lines you need to run. If you have an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator you're looking to install, be sure to check out my video linked on the screen or in the description below. So as you guys saw over the last 10 minutes, that's pretty much everything you're going to need to do to turbo swap your KA240SX. So let's give it a crank and see if it starts. So now that I got the whole car running, it's time to figure out the downpipe. So I got the downpipe put in here so you can see how it's mocked up. Obviously, I don't have the four bolt flange anymore. Once I get one of the V-band flanges mounted to the compressor side of the turbo, I can go ahead and cut the flange off the downpipe and then get it all lined up, tack weld it, pull it all out and weld it together. All right, so I went ahead and got the V-band flange mounted to the compressor side of the turbo. Now I'm gonna pull this up, cut off this front flange, get everything lined up, tack weld it together, pull it out, and then weld it. I went ahead and I got some zero gauge wire and I relocated my battery back to the trunk. Now that I got my battery relocated to the back, everything's running really good. I got my AFR, my boost gauge, and my voltage gauge put in. You're probably gonna wanna get an oil pressure sensor as well because well, you, want, you wanna know what's going on inside your engine. Oh. Oh. I'm supposed to be quiet. <laughs> your s13 running on a chiptune dcu you'll want to stick around for part two where i show you how to wrap up the engine bay after the turbo system installation and then prepare to show you guys how to install a standalone ecu into the car and get your car running on it if you're digging what we're doing here and want to support the channel we have some new merchandise items that we just dropped which you can find in the description below on our website shopdabitat.com Additionally, we have a Patreon where we plan on doing periodic giveaways and cluing you guys into the plans, builds, and infrastructure for the channel as we move forward with the content. With that said, thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. 
Don't forget to smash that like button to help the channel grow and be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future updates. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.